Well, puppetry. Yeah, that side of live theatre where uh, so-called puppet masters take a, a human or, or animal-like figure and uh, bring it to life by making it move with their hands or by uh, operating strings attached to the puppet's hands or feet. It's been a part of theatre for a long, long time, centuries. In fact, it was the, the Greeks who first came up with the idea. The first puppets actually go back to the 5th century BC. But for a long time, as well as entertainment, the aim of puppetry was always to hide the puppeteer, to, to fool the audience into believing, at least while the performance was happening, uh, that the puppet is alive and autonomous. Uh, but this weekend at the Toowoomba Empire Theatre's Thrive on Arts Festival, you're going to see some larger-than-life puppets created by a company called the Dead Puppet Society, where the puppeteer is clearly visible in the performance. In fact, they're almost part of the performance. There's a very good reason for that, though. Matt can explain. Matt Seary is the Dead Puppet Society's Associate uh, Creative Director. He joins me now. Matt Seary, good morning. Welcome. Hey, thanks very much. Good to be talking to you. Matt, I find puppetry overall just really, really fascinating. Tell me about your own relationship with this style of theatre. Where did your love affair with puppetry begin? Yeah, well, I mean, we're, of course, um, the company's called Dead Puppet Society. We're pretty obsessed with the form of puppetry. Um, we think we've found a bit of a unique take on it, though, something you don't often see uh, in here in Australia or really anywhere around the world, where it's a much more sophisticated approach uh, that's hopefully capturing the imaginations of young people, but also adults at the same time. We don't try to hide our performers. There are no tricks up our sleeves. We actually try to show you exactly how we're doing things. All of the cables and pulleys and electronics are all completely visible for you to have a look at and yet something about the way that our performers move these objects you can't help but but sort of fall in love with them you can't help but believe them and that's a massive departure though isn't it i, I mean i know you you're not the first to do that but certainly going back the traditional puppetry it was all about trying to convince people that the puppet had a life of its own yeah, it's certainly not uh, people's first sort of gut gut instinct of what sort of what puppetry is, or how even you know, as we work with new actors and new performers, how um, they can actually just be really liberated and let themselves go, and by not trying to worry about hiding this or hiding that, they can actually go fully into the imaginative place and just play with no limitations on them. Does it confuse audiences? At first, they sort of think, "Is this a mistake? Am I supposed to be able to see this person?" You know. Yeah, I think it definitely catches people off guard, which um, I don't think is unhelpful. I, I really enjoy the thing uh, where people sort of stop and do a double take and think, hang on, what's going on there? It actually makes people sort of look closer and lean in harder, which um, only helps us at the end of the day, because once people have crossed that line and they're imagining with us what this creature is or this object is, we're all on the same page. We're all same, playing the same game together. And tell me again why that's Betty. Does it allow you to do things with the the puppets that you couldn't do if you were spending all your energy and all the design of the puppets on trying to obscure any sighting of the actual operator. Yeah, absolutely. It just gives us a lot more freedom, not only in the design of our puppets, which are, you know, pretty mechanical and intricate and no sort of no mean feat to put together. Uh, it just frees us up to make a lot of choices that we otherwise wouldn't be able to make. But I think most importantly, it means if we're on a theatre stage or if we're out on the street, we're going to have our roving puppets like we will be um, later this week. There's no, you know, we're no more important in the, the act of imagination as the audience. You know, we don't have all of the answers, but together we'll find the answers. It's sort of a more a more democratic and a more, um, we hope, inclusive way of, of sharing puppetry with, with audiences. I notice, certainly with one of the puppet figures I saw there, you've sort of almost taken that a step further where, and I think in this case it was a, a, a dragon, I, I presume, I don't mm. know, or, or perhaps a, a large dog. <laughs> mm. I know the two have got nothing to do with each other, but it was one <laughs> of the two, I can tell you that much. It was a very doggy dragon, yeah. That's right, exactly. That's the one, yes, that rare breed. But there, there had been a lot of, like, the, the face and the head of the, the creature was all sort of completely fully formed, but the rest of the, the body was sort of almost skeletal. Is that something yeah, that you do I fairly often I... as well? Yeah, I think um, I think you might have been looking at this enormous um, grizzly bear puppet that we've just finished uh, performing at 
as part of the Brisbane Festival, our sort of uh, the latest work, Holding Achilles. But you're absolutely right. This is a puppet that it's in five separate pieces. There's a head that's not attached to its body. The four legs are not attached to each other. So it means that our performers as an ensemble can sort of fade in and out and move around each other. And every now and again, the bear will fall into place and you'll see it as it truly is. But otherwise, a paw can swipe out further than it would otherwise be able to reach. And it's really, you know, it's a combination of the, the puppet object itself but also the negative space in between that becomes ours to play with. That's really interesting because, again, I suppose people might say, is it cost-cutting? You know, because you, you, you could have designed mega puppets that, that mm. people have to almost mm. hop inside to operate that don't that every part of the, the creature that they're trying to depict is actually fully formed. But it's not even that. It, it's almost just so that it's the same thing, isn't it? So that people will just concentrate on the parts that they can see and you can expand the whole boundaries of it. Yeah, it's all about staying in a place where we have the most creative freedom to do the sort of things that's not only surprise our audience, but surprise us with the possibilities. Uh, and that, you know, we're giving a sort of very beautiful uh, sketched outline of a creature, but it takes the audience's imagination to fully fill in the gaps. Does technology come into play even with how the puppets are operated will you use technology to help you move the puppets yeah. in a more believable way or absolutely more and more i mean the um the sort of weekly um friendly argument we have with the team is you know where does something stop being a puppet and starts becoming a robot or yeah. something else and you know these are really fine lines and it's slippery definitions so that's um sort of really exciting for us technology has always been a part of um of what we create, whether it's through sort of surprising custom lighting designs and gadgets like that, or particularly with the megafauna puppets that we're roving um, as part of Thrive on Arts Festival, they have this incredible um, vocal effect trick inside them where the, the poor former who's uh, operating the head of the creature has this, um, can only describe it as a Madonna mic, but they can give these sort of really gentle grunts and moans and these guttural noises and this effect box within the creature itself just transforms that voice and rolls it in on itself and over on itself. And it wow. becomes this sort of like ground shaking roar that you hear from blocks away just from, yeah, a really slight suggestion from the performer. So in that way, technology is, um, is already like game changing for us in our performances. And no one could ever say, oh, look, that's the crossing line between puppetry and, and robotics. But it certainly does enhance the performance of what is inarguably a puppet though yeah I, I i absolutely agree not only is there it's you know it's a it's a live human performer in front of you who are still creating those sounds we're just getting a helping hand from technology yeah um but of course even that technology was designed and crafted and implemented by another artist a sound artist who isn't with you on the day but has had a, a huge hand in shaping the experience this workshop that you're also doing as part of the the thrive mm. on arts festival at the empire tomorrow you're doing the workshop mm. is really going back to basics though you're, you're teaching kids how to, to create a, a fairly rudimentary puppet yeah that's right so tomorrow afternoon um we're, we're running sort of a it's kind of taking uh, artists of all ages kind of into our process we won't be creating a fully uh, realized enormous street roving puppet of course um, but we, we're going to do the first steps exactly as we do them we start in this imaginative place where we imagine what a creature might look like and walk like and feel like and sound like and then we've got to actually bring that into the world somehow so the way we do that is we use really rough and ready materials that we can just grab off the shelf it's paper and cardboard and straws and tape and we we, we actualize it uh, in the real world so we design prototypes out of these materials and get a sense of them we start rehearsing with them we learn how to move them we learn what tricks they can do and we do all of this essentially on a tiny tabletop where we can look at things together and and just play and just invent and then of course later that is translated into these you know, mega machines yeah that's a uh, matt from the dead puppet society matt siri uh, the empire theater's thrive on arts is a four-day festival uh, it's really all about fostering a creative space for young people families and the wider community uh, as a space that celebrates play imagination creativity and storytelling all vital and fun stuff there's a lot on as part of this festival. Some events are ticketed, others are free. Have a look on the website. There's also a series of workshops, uh, as you heard there. One of them is being hosted by Matt and the team at the Dead Puppet Society, where they will teach you to make your own basic puppet and then uh, learn some of the fundamentals of, of operating puppets 
for the stage. If you want more details about all of the Thrive On Arts Festival events and that workshop in particular, uh, check out the Empire Theatre's website. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Three to seven, ABC News next.